Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, The Case of the Catastrophic Flood, a Hotel Horror Story. The second story, For some reason the neighbors thought it was a cool idea to take over part of my garden. The third story, Web Designer's Revenge, When Creativity Clashes with Unpaid Invoices. The first story is, The Fable of the Fraudulent Flutter. Few nights ago, I meet a lady. We'll call her Karen for the sake of this post. I'll go by FD. My first encounter with her wasn't anything special. Karen walked in holding a handful of lottery scratchers and a tall can of some sort of booze. She had locked herself out of her room and just needed an extra key. I asked for her ID to verify who she was, which she provided with no issue, and then handed her a copy of her room key. No drama, just a standard interaction. A few minutes later I get a call from Karen's room. Her husband was asking if I had a plunger because their toilet was clogged. I told him I did, and I would bring it to his room right away. I grab the mobile landline, put away the sign and start walking out to their room. As I'm walking Karen's room calls me again. Front desk I answer. Hi, actually our toilet is flooding now. I grab some of my tools from my truck to try and fix the clog myself, but now water is pouring everywhere. It's all over the floor. At this point in my head I'm wondering what the hell they had for dinner to clog it that bad, and what kind of tool you would possibly use beside a plunger to unclog a toilet. I get to the room and find the door open. I announce myself and walk in, expecting some minor flooding from the bowl of the toilet. What I saw was definitely not minor. The guests had removed the lid from the tank and had somehow managed to break the floater system. Water was flooding out of the tank and the bowl was already filled to the brim. And when I say flooding, I mean it looked like a small Niagara Falls coming out of the tank. I reached into the tank and depressed the plunger to try and stop the water from coming up and found out that this just caused the water to start flooding out from between the tank and the bowl, meaning the seal had been broken. Water at this point was already flooding out into the rest of the hotel room. I then told the guests that I was going to move them to a different room. Karen said she'd go with me down to the lobby, and when we arrived I upgraded her to a deluxe room for free, and made her new keys. As I was handing her the new keys, she looked me dead in the eyes with the most SH-eating grin she could muster and said, Oh by the way, what time does your manager come in tomorrow? I want to see about getting a discount for all this trouble. Oh, he should be in around 9am tomorrow, I reply with. She says okay and goes to help her husband move to the new room down the hall. Keep in mind during this whole interaction water is still flooding out of the destroyed toilet into the second floor room. I find the maintenance keychain with the water key on it and return to the room. Water is now flooded onto the walkway outside the door and most of the room is soaked. I eventually get the water turned off for the room after soaking myself in toilet water. Then I went to the electrical room and shut off the breaker for that room and the one below it. After a brisk and chilly walk back to the front desk in the 20 degree night air soaked in toilet water, I'm immediately greeted by the phone ringing. Who else but Karen, right? Front desk, is everything okay with the new room? I prompt. Karen. Yes, everything is fine, but I want to wash this SH water off my clothes. I need some detergent compensated. After asking her to hold for a second, I find one of our extra boxes of Purex and tell her she can come down to pick it up. I'm starting to get very agitated now because I'm soaked in toilet water. One of our rooms is destroyed, and the Karen who destroyed it is now trying to milk the hell out of us. I'm still trying to be accommodating though. Karen gets to the lobby and I hand her the box of Purex. And the dryer sheets? She asks with a completely straight face, without a care in the world. I explain to her that I can only comp her the box of detergent, but we have dryer sheets in the store. I'm allergic to Purex anyway. She scoffs as she goes and picks out her laundry items. I don't understand why you can't handle $3 after the SH I just had to deal with. I give her a discount on the items and send her on her way. Not two minutes later, she comes back. Do you have the housekeeping key or whatever so I can do all my laundry for free? I nearly blow my top. Ma'am, unfortunately the machines don't work like that. I don't have any keys to turn off the coin charge, I explain. What's your name, she snaps. FD, she snaps again. I just had all my effing clothes covered in SH water because your ancient toilets exploded and you can't give me anything to make it right? Is that what I'm supposed to believe? Trying not to lose my mind, I say, ma'am, I'm truly sorry for the inconvenience and I understand it's frustrating. I want to work with you to make this right. However, I only have so much power. If you'd like, I can have housekeeping wash your clothes for free in our machines in the morning. But I don't have a way to disable the coin machines on the washers in the guest laundry room. Her only reply to this before leaving was, I'm not waiting around to wash clothes covered in toilet water. I'm red in the face at this point, and I watch cameras to make sure she doesn't trash the laundry room. 
I didn't see her again for my shift. I explained the situation in detail in my shift report to the manager, and to my relief in the morning. Word is that the manager basically told her to F off, and she's on the DNR list for property damage now. She never got that discount. It won't let me attach any of the pictures of the room damage, but the water was covering the entire floor space of the room, save for a small maybe 8 square foot area. The water also leaked out onto the walkway in front of the room. It's an inn, so outdoor walkways. This particular area of the walkway was conveniently under some minor maintenance, so down on the first floor walkway there was water literally raining down in front of the room below. The room is still under reconstructed maintenance. Well, Karen took literal water into her own hands and created a real fountainizing performance. Her acting talent is in how she first managed to break the toilet bowl and then proceeded to saturate the room with this priceless water symphony. Let's start with how she called you in about the clogged toilet. Perhaps she set a new standard for people who believe that toilets are some mysterious mechanical marvels that can easily explode. No, that's not a movie, Karen. And even if it were, you still wouldn't be starring in it. And then, in a moment of true toilet epic drama, when the water rushed in like Niagara Falls, you, Karen, raised the bar when it came to chutzpah. You wanted to discount for your own destruction and seemed to view laundry as part of your life. You just don't seem to realize that you're not in the water park for scammers here. Your performance got you transferred to another room and then you were thrown out of this place honorably and deservedly blacklisted. You never got the discount, but your story became an amusing anecdote for us at work. At least now we know what to expect if you're called for a nightly audit at a hotel. The second story is... Entitled Neighbors, from walking into my house to eyeing up my garden. So I first met James and Rose, fake names, when I heard my doorbell ring. I head downstairs and find them already in my living room. Yep, my girlfriend opened the door, and they just waltzed right in like they owned the place. Awkwardly said hello whilst guiding them back out the front door. Thought that was that, boy was I wrong. James and Rose bought an ex-council house that had been badly damaged by the last tenants. I'm talking busted walls, shattered windows, you name it. House was listed accurately so none of this was a surprise to them. Strangely, I never had problems with the people who used to rent. Was amazed when they left and I saw the damage they'd done. James and Rose decided I'd be helping them out and had the audacity to come over with a contract they'd drafted stating that their builders can use my garden, my bathroom, and that they could use my kitchen whenever they needed until theirs was installed. Them handing me this contract was the second time I ever interacted with them. I went round and told them it was ludicrous and to shove it. They weren't pleased and slammed the door in my face. Not too long after I find them stood in my back garden. My girlfriend had been hanging up laundry, and they'd apparently heard her and decided to let themselves through my front yard, around the side of my house and right up to her. Girlfriend was practically frozen holding up a pair of her pants whilst they were just stood there looking around and smiling. Then they suggested, given how unhelpful I'd been with their renovations, that I host a barbecue for them and their friends. What friends, you ask? Beats me. I shut that down quick and told them to never come through to my back garden again. But they weren't done and couldn't leave yet. They had the gall to propose, straight after being told to GTFO, that I give up roughly one-fifth of my garden so our gardens could be equally sized. I told them in no uncertain terms that they can forget it. Not my problem. They bought a house with a smaller garden. I was seeing red and I think they knew they'd pushed it too far as they scampered away. I guess James and Rose decided that since I wouldn't willingly give them part of my garden, they'd try taking it instead. From my back room I saw some guy standing at the end of my garden. I went out to ask who he was, and how the hell he got there. When in saunters you guessed it, James and Rose. Turns out James and Rose had torn down our adjoining fence, and this guy was planning where the new one would go. Clearly not having been told that it's my garden, and I absolutely was not on board with this plan. Oh, but wait, they also peeped through my windows and had questions about my belongings. I do kickboxing and have a bob, a life-size training dummy. And did I know that it's scary and should probably be moved away from the window? They didn't want to see it whilst they were enjoying their newly enlarged garden. I calmly told the man that I was keeping all my garden and none of them had my permission to be there. I also informed them that if I catch them in my garden again, they're volunteering to be my new bob. Last I heard, they tried to bully our 70-year-old neighbor into giving up part of his garden. He's got early onset dementia and his four of his five sons visit regularly but don't live with them. I stay in contact with them as I go around to help my neighbor now and then, or just chat to keep him company. He's a really cool guy and hearing him upset about some contract and losing where his shed is, and I was fighting not to see Red. One text to his sons and that nonsense was shut down real quick. I never thought I'd meet people this entitled, but here we are. Needless to say, James and Rose have kept their distance since my very explicit warnings, which extend to bothering our dear old neighbor too. My girlfriend is back to hanging up washing outside, but she won't open the front door without checking the ring cam first now. Just in case it's them. Edit. James and Rose are hated around here. A guy called Jim is our local handyman. Great at all those things you can't do, don't have the tools for or don't have the skills to manage. Apparently after the first job he doubled his daily rate just for them. 
Either they won't hire him or he'll get double the money. Win-win. Oh, James and Rose. They're the kings of entitled neighbors. So brazenly showing up at someone else's house as if it were their own. And then there's their lavish contract where their builders had to have access to everything, including your bathroom. It would be funny if it wasn't so sad. The idea of having a barbecue in someone else's garden is just a masterpiece. Did they really think people would just give them their own plots for nothing? And as for their offer to divide your garden equally, it's such a magnificent realization of lawlessness and violation of other people's property that even creative screenwriters couldn't have come up with a better one. Clarifying relationships one moment and inviting acquaintances over the next is straight checkmate. And finally, their sneakiness with tearing down a fence to expand their territory and then being blacklisted by a horrible neighbor afterwards. A worthy finale. PSOP, if they set foot on your property again, call the police or really make them new versions of Bob. The third story is creative revenge. When I was freelancing in web design and development, I sometimes worked within client servers or at the very least did nightly uploads. Mistake number one. But even though I did this, I always made a point to host each and every code markup file dependency on my server. I would also block every crawler to make sure the site was never catched at any point. There was only one time that I had to actually take advantage of this. I designed the site in Sketch. I programmed a super simple custom CMS in Python, Django, did some heavy CSS work to get it pixel perfect, uploaded the end result. Client was totally satisfied and couldn't wait to launch. Payment was due right after go live. Mistake number two. I know naive, but it was a referral from a close friend. A day after we went live, the client decided that they weren't gonna pay me the low five figures they owed me. No explanation, just completely ghosted me. They changed the password to the SSH and FTP accounts I was using to access their server. I replaced the CSS file with one that hit all the site's markup and replaced it with a gigantic banner, announcing that this client did not pay for services rendered. The client was left with the CMS and the markup, just like the design was gone, and the CMS was worth no more than a vanilla WordPress installation. At this point, I didn't want my work to represent their brand and was no longer interested in their money, so going nuclear was the only option. Luckily, I was in a position financially to do so. It took them a few days to revert back to their old site, and if they had any sysadmins worth their pay, spoiler, they didn't, they would have easily thwarted my backup plan. A lot of people just generally don't respect creatives. Well, it seems like this client thought they could outsmart you, but boy, did they underestimate the power of a web designer with a sense of humor. You see, when you mess with a creative genius, you better be prepared for some creative revenge. Changing the password? No problem. You just changed the entire look and feel of their website to a this client didn't pay masterpiece. And when they had to revert to their old site, that must have been a hilarious moment for you, knowing you held the design hostage. It's a great reminder that you should never underestimate or undervalue creatives. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.